All right, so let's introduce you guys to the new project. This is a 1974 Chevy Custom Deluxe. It was a gift from my mother-in-law's uncle to her. I don't need to open the door to show you the engine. It's got a nice, convenient little button here. Let me set you guys down a moment. It has just a basic 350 with long tubes, unknown camshaft. Um, not a whole lot going on here. So, what I'm doing in order to make this more drivable for her, uh, because unfortunately Jim had passed away this year, earlier this year. So, to honor his memory and make this thing more drivable, I'm doing an EFI conversion. Come into the shop here. It's a little on the messy side. We've got a couple projects going that are stuck waiting for parts. But, <coughs> as you've seen in the thumbnail, I have a Mega Squirt 2 prepped, built, and ready to go in that truck. Kits available at DIY Auto Tune. No, I am not sponsored by them. I bought this with my own money. Um, TBI conversions are well documented. They probably won't do anything about it anyway. That being said, it's a 92 TBI with the weather pack plugs on it. That one there. Um, this one's on order from Amazon right now. It just shipped out because my local place that I got this one from doesn't stock that style for some weird reason. It's a stock TBI, stock injectors. I have the gasket kit for it already. All I need to do is change the throttle cable from this slightly newer style down to the old style. Um, but the kick down should be the same. And the manifold for it is right there. I need to get it cleaned and I need to modify it still. Um, cable bundle or wire bundle, they're not really cables. A new relay board because that truck does not have fuel injection control stuff. I don't even think it has any relays on it, period. Uh, power to ground switched. These relay boards have everything laid out. Uh, 12 volt power fuses, 40 amp relays. I think this is for spare connectors uh, for like the CAN bus and um, three and four, which one of those I'll have to use for a second wideband. Um, O2 sensor bungs are on their way. They're in the mail. Probably show up here tomorrow. Um, they left Salt Lake this morning. <coughs> so that's cool. A little bit of welding to do. And I still need to design the fuel system to connect to that and return to the fuel tank. Um, chances are I'll probably just use a bulkhead stuck straight into the uh, fuel hat on the tank. If it has one. I imagine it does because it has a sending unit. But it should be you know, quick and simple nothing real fancy and it's just a 3 8 drain line coming out of the the back of the throttle body unit that guy so uh, i'll end part one here for the recordings um, and i'll pick back up as soon as i'm ready to install all this mainly the wiring i still need to find a home for that so i'll see you in the next clip all right, part two. God, that door is closed. Slow, not closed. Um, got some things to show you before we get started. I fed the cable for the relay block through. That guy there. I need to put the cover on still. Make sure none of the wires are damaged. Um, got the vacuum line pulled through right there. 
that'll go over to the TBI, which is not mounted yet. That's still the quadra jet. Um, still need to do a service. Still need to change all of this crap right here because that is not good. <coughs> yes, the jack is original. Jack is still with the truck. Fun side note. Um, come around here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. <coughs> nope. Uh, let's see. Can I turn the flash? Nope. Brightness. Right there. Uh, let me come back to that. Alright, so, there is the MS2 next to the stock factory fuse box. All this wiring mess I need to rip out and sort through. But I think that's going to be the permanent mounting place for the MS2. Uh, the holes are real convenient, so that's a plus. And there's really no other spot I can put it in. So, I'm kind of out of options. Back on the outside of the truck. So, I come over here to my welder. I got these two oh, two sensor bungs so I can add the dual wide bands to the exhaust. I just wonder why my finger felt funny. Apparently, I nicked it on something. Anyway, um, these are for that. I'll weld them on, show you guys pictures, of course. Probably some video, too. Um, so, we're making progress. Okay. Picked a spot for, well, kind of picked a spot for the relay board. And I figured I would test the TPS and the idle control. That guy, those two right there, and they work. So that's awesome. Two sensors I don't have to replace. Um, I will replace the CLT and the IAT just because um, I'm not sure I want to trust the ones from 92, but those those are less critical. So it's whatever. Um, routed the power wire into the existing harness that comes all the way around the auxiliary power input. I'm told this is for a block heater, but since we're not using that, it makes an excellent power source for the mega squirt. Um, ground wire temporarily screwed to the intake manifold. Obviously a 12 gauge wire going down to an 18 gauge wire is not very good or smart, but I can't find any ring connectors currently that fits this big wire so I can bolt it to the back of the head. <coughs> That's coming. I need to hit up a parts store. But, we'll show you the screen here. As you can see, it's plugged in. I turn on the key, and the mega squirt wakes up. So, we are making progress. So I brought, well, as you can hear, that was the idle control valve buzzing. Um, got the TBI sitting here in my lap. I just turned the power on. And, you know, the IAC actuated. So, there's power. Come over here to the data log. And you can see TPS works beautifully. I've already recalibrated it so it swings from 0 to 100. Um, I come up here to test mode. My friends are really chatty. Shut up. You can see the gauges move there. And buzzing in the background. Over here. As you guys can see, I've had a haircut. 
Yes, my hair sucks. Part of genetics. Nothing I can do about it. Um, sitting here in the square body. Need to charge it. It's getting really low. I had to jump it to get it in here. Um, the Mega Squirt it needs to be mounted. The relay box needs to be mounted. And then the CLT, the IAT, probably the cylinder head temp, and the two wide bands I need to buy still. Um, <clears throat> and then weld the bungs on, like I mentioned earlier. Calibrate everything, and this should be up and running. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, um, donate to the Patreon, you know, what have you. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully there's another update soon.